Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another One Piece manga review. This is chapter 1131. I'm one of your hosts, Mr. Lyndon Burton, joined by your other host, Mr. Verse in the Vassal, a.k.a. Joshua Trostclair. V-Man, how you doing, brother? Hey, man, how's it going? You know, uh, not too bad. I'd say it's a beautiful Saturday, but it's a little hot for November. But, you know, yeah, facts. I'm, sure, I'm, uh, I'm sure that's nothing to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> Doing, and I've said this on every pod this week, doing as well as one can in the time of the world. And for that, let me just promote something we're going to be doing. This week's Bros Who Think podcast will be a very big episode. Not only will myself and Reg be doing stuff, but we will have special guests, verse and verse, and we'll sit down with myself and we will discuss the state of the of the country. We'll discuss the climate of the country post-election because Verson is not only in depth in everything he does for agriculture and this this the uh, ecosystem of Louisiana politics and not just Louisiana, but the ecosystem of American politics. So he's a perfect person to discuss the results and how we move forward, as well as we will have political science major Reg, the guy who studies this. So both people will give you their perspectives on what's going on. And since I know not to just a uh, single version out or anything like that, but because I know version tends to lean more liberal, I've already just told Reg and his section of it. I need him to play devil's advocate as much as he can when I ask him certain questions that I ask version, but then we'll get his opinion on it without the devil's advocate stuff. So big, big bros who think podcast episode this week. Um, Y'all can tune into that. That'll be out. Monday, but at the latest, it'll be Tuesday. But y'all aren't here for that. This is to distract you. This is to get your mind off. And let me not use the word distract because that has a negative connotation. This is to just give you something to ease your mind when you listen to this and when you read One Piece. So with that being said, yeah. uh, oh, go a ahead. Little bit of a, oh, just a little bit of escapism in the land mm-hmm. of Elbath. Yep, 100%. Where they actually have winter. 100 like Louisiana. <laughs> so with that being said, if you're new to this, the way we do our reviews, a little different than everybody else, I do a brief synopsis of the entire chapter. That way you can know what has happened in the chapter. But then after that, we do deep dives on which we feel are the most important parts of the chapter. That way you can get theories, you can get uh, just our thoughts overall, and I, we feel that it's a better method. So with that being said, let's get into a chapter 1131, the Loki, the realm of the dead. This chapter starts off with a very interesting cover story. We see Yamato and uh oh, I'm blanking on her name. Verse will probably tell me when we get to uh when we get to the section, but we see Yamato, the little girl who saves Wano by feeding Luffy, the horse centaur lady. And her lion compatriot, they're all chasing after the person who stole the sword. We then cut into the chapter where Luffy is excited. He's like, yes, we're in Elbath. Uh, Loki's like, hey, bro, listen to me when I'm talking to you, dog. And Luffy's like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm having a good time. We see in a bunch of giants. We see in these giant animals. I'm loving this. And Loki's like, bro. I'm the sun god. I'm here to destroy this. You better listen to me when I talk to you. And Luffy's like, whatever, dog. I'll, uh, what you got to say? And Loki's like, you free me. I'll destroy any pirate crew you want no matter what. And, you know, Luffy's not really about that action. Uh, and that's not really his cup of tea. He was like, let me just listen to you and see what you're talking about. And basically he explains that this is the underground area. This is uh, what they know call as the underworld, the realm of the dead. It's a prison and execution ground for all of the criminals that were dropped here, along with insane uh, giant beast monsters. And Luffy's like, ah, this reminds me of Ruskina. This is, I feel right at home. And basically they continue to talk and Loki goes into how much he doesn't really like humans, how they're puny humans, how humans are weak. And then he brings up a certain pirate. Uh, He brings up Shanks. And he was basically like, uh, this was the last time somebody powerful was here. We didn't expect him to show up again. And boy, Loki says something that Luffy did not like. He called Shanks a coward. Luffy jumps into gear four right away. We see this new base 
gear four hybrid thing, which we'll discuss. He ends up striking at Loki. Loki dodges. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was just joking. I was just joking. Can't take a joke, buddy. We then cut over to uh, the other Straw Hats who are on Elbath. They are running away from uh, that pirate road. He's chasing after them. We then see the other uh, pirates from um, our, our boy, uh, Hyrodeen's crew, Karen the Sunny. And instead of talking to them, the Straw Hats are like, fuck this, we keep running out. We then see Hyrodeen as he defeated a giant moose for us, a meal for them. And that moose is bigger than Hyrodeen and his right hand, oh no, no, his uh, shipwright Stanson. Also, we get a, a description of each of the new giant privates. We know that we have Stanson, the shipwright, Goldberg, the cook, Gerd, the ship doctor, and Roto, the navigator. So they're taking this moose to go get, uh, to go feed and, you know, share with his crew. We then cut over to the Dorian Broggy side of things where they're on the uh, ship and Robin asks Brooke to cut her hair to be like when she first came into the Straw Hats so Saul could recognize her. And boy, does that haircut look great. But all things aren't always that. Uh, good because we cut over to Elbath before the chapter ends and it says in these words uh, this is bad this is bad it's Mr. Saul he's fallen and he can't get up something's happened to Saul as the narrator says and that's the end of the chapter we'll find out what happened to him next week verse and where do you want to begin first of all life alert is so important whenever you're an Asian mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. and when you've been through stuff but uh do you think they yeah, have snail really kind of snail alert? Like, do you think they have like a uh, ding ding mushy alert life thing? <laughs> I mean, if they're giants, I'm surprised they don't have like a big ass horn to blow. Yeah, you know, all all across the island. But the, you know I mean? but does life alert exist in the One Piece world in the form of like a ding ding mushy? You press the button and no, the snail's mouth open common. up and it goes wow wow. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone had it, I think Sengoku would have it. Gotcha, we haven't gotcha. seen it. Oh, uh, what, what's the girl's name in the cover story? Because I forgot it uh, from Wano. We got Yamato and the centaur Speed. lady. Uh, and who? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we have Yamato, Speed, and... Uh, I'm blanking on her Tama? name. Yeah, that is Tama. Okay. Tama, Speed, Yamato, and then the lion. They're going after the criminal. But where would you like to begin, brother? You want to begin with Loki and Luffy's conversation? Do you want to begin at yeah, the end? That is the majority of the chapter. So pretty well, much. Yeah. Do you want to knock out the intro first, real quick? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you want to knock out the end and then the new giant pirate stuff? And then we could get to the Loki mm -hmm. Luffy stuff. All right. So I love Robin's haircut, man. It looks great. Brooke did a damn good job. Bangs are popping, Queen. Yeah, like I, I like it. It's youthful, it's bouncy. You know what I mean? Um I don't know. And I think obviously it's very sweet that she wanted to like she wanted to remind it easier Saul. for yeah. Saul to remember. Exactly. You know? Do you think Oda is doing this thing where they won't get to meet? Because that will be extremely heartbreaking. Yeah, no. I think <laughs> that I think that we're not gonna get to meet is gonna be Luffy and Shanks. As I already said, he's already gone. I think Robin has to meet Soul. I think it would be kind of pointless, especially to introduce like, him, yeah, and say he's alive and I yeah, like, because Robin's already had a couple reactions to it, and, like, I don't think Oda is, he's no Gage Akutami. He's not pointlessly cruel. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? but, no, for sure, it's like, he could have just kept him dead for all of that, instead of yeah, yeah. telling Robin at Egghead, making it this big deal that he's alive, and then, oh, sorry, Robin, you're a little too late. Right when you got here, he fell and died. Like, that's not good writing, and that's not Oda. Like, she I can see, have to, I can see Saul dying at the end of the arc. Or to yeah. you saying like how they had to save Nami and Drum Island at the beginning because this is kind of giving Drum Island vibes where they had to go get the medicine to save Nami. That could be Robin's mm -hmm. storyline in this. Yeah, especially since we are kind of like making little callbacks to the other prominent Winter Island with Drum Island. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and like since we know that uh, Elbeth has these different realms, I know a lot of people have theorized that each straw hat will go to a different realm. But we're kind of leading that way if Robin's thing is, hey, we got to go to the inside, the tree realm, the Midgard to mm -hmm. go get this medicine for Saul. And each person is going to a different realm. I wouldn't be mad at that. But I yeah, do or, just to say or even like a, oh, go ahead. or even like a reverse rescue Robin where it's like we're not rescuing Robin. But we're going to support her. And each one of us is going to fight our way through a level. Mm -hmm. And like maybe somebody has to stay back until eventually it's like maybe Luffy and Robin, the last ones. 
especially since they are like so connected mentally. Like he like puts her over the top and gets mm. her into like the heaven realm or something. See, I could definitely she see can, it like, being pick a flower. I could definitely see it being any of that. I, I'm definitely leaning towards Rom Robin has to go on this mission for to save Saul and she's going to a different realm. And I think that'd be good for Robin because we haven't had any, you know, we haven't had many Robin led missions where, you know, she was on her own. We got to see her, how she goes. Obviously she could take someone with her and uh, do this, but that'd be very interesting. And now just real quick. I do think if, if Saul would die, I do think it would be at the end, but, I'm leaning towards what we're saying where Robin's going to be the one to save him. Saul saved her when she's younger and it's, it's come full circle. Now, uh, the, like, the, oh, bare minimum, bare minimum, uh, Saul needs to meet Robin's new friends and family. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. After I'm he sent her on that quest and told to find her, people to love her, there Man. are people out in the world. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, now we got the new giant, the new giant pirates. I like that. We got a little, uh, sidebar with each of them having C Captain Hyrdin, Goldberg the cook, Gerd the ship doctor, Stanson. Who I'm out of, out of everyone that's not Hyrdin, I think I like Stanson the best, man. <laughs> yeah, I think he's all right. Like you know, I I like his I look. Don't like mm -hmm. I don't have enough of them to like say one or the other. I do like his look. Gerd's obviously hot. And, uh, you know, we got to go pull for the burly men, the big the big boys. And yeah. Stanson is a badass big boy, not a joke big boy like Queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So absolutely. I rock with that. Um, and he I has a like hammer, our... bro. You see that giant hammer? Like, what? Can you not hear me? Oh, <laughs> As well. no. Did you say the hammer? Did you say something about that? No, 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 no. No, I was just saying, like, uh, I was going to say, like, I do like how we're immediately contrasting, obviously, Hyrdeen and, like, the new giants with some of the old giants. And how also, like, on some level, even some of the new giant pirates, although they are loyal to Hyrdeen and I'm sure, like, love him as their captain, aren't necessarily fully, I think, 100% committed to the whole Luffy and the Straw Hats are the best. Like, you know, Hyrdeen right now is kind of a little bit on his, like, uh, Barto type beat, you know? Where he's like, nah, these guys are the best. Like, you know, they're awesome fighters. They're cool as hell. And, like, they deserve a hero's welcome with this big-ass moose. Yeah, know? they got to meet him. And I think it's going to be a thing of more, less for Stanson because he seems like that's Hyredeen's boy. Mm -hmm. And, like, they get along together like axe and hammer bros. I think for Gerd and Gold Goldberg, Roto is just the outcast. I think for Gold and Gerber, uh, Gold, Gold, Gerd? And Goldberg, excuse me, they had to, they, they're going to need to see the Straw Hats in action to see why Pyrodine made that choice. And once they see that, I think they'll be good. But Yeah, like, I think they agree with him, like, they vouch for him as their captain and everything, but I think on some level for them, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever you say, Pyrodine, whatever you say. Yeah, what, yeah. You, you know, he's you our know, captain, like we gotta go along with it. But, yeah, mm. like how the crew sometimes are like, yeah, okay, Luffy. Mm -hmm. You want to go over there? We'll go over there. But they yeah. trust him. And then once they see yeah. what, what's going on, they're like, ah, okay, we see why you made this decision. But I'm definitely rocking with Stanson. I do think, funny enough, these people were inspired by wrestlers because every name of um, Hyredine's crew has a reference to a wrestler. You have Goldberg, obviously. Stanson is a combination of Stan Hansen, who was a famous, famous wrestler in New Japan. Um, Roto has a ties to TNA. And then Gerd is the only one I'm not sure about. But I definitely will believe that Gerd has ties to a wrestler because every other name does. And I'm going to assume that Gerd has ties to a female, a famous Japanese female wrestler. I'll do my research for the next episode, but... I know three of the four do. So if three of the four do version, it's probably that the fourth does as well. Well, not only that, but also we got to keep in mind, GERD is also, uh, it's, the release is the English word for a type of illness. Mm, okay. Um, I think, gotcha. I think it's one that pregnant women get a lot. Oh, know? okay. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know if that's the, the only reference to it, but I'm just saying, you know, like, uh, a lot of doctors in one piece seem to be tied to either some sort of curative or they're tied to some sort of illness. Like, how Doc Q makes everyone sick all the time and everything. So, you know, it might be continuing on with that. Oh, okay. So there was, okay, okay, here we go. Looked it up. There was a famous wrestler 
who named Bob Swetan or Bob Sweeten that went by GERD. He was the inventor of the pile driver, Mr. Pile Driver. Mm. And he had, you know, he was trained by the famous Stu Hart. He wrestled in Canada, but he also had extensive work in Japan. So <laughs> the wrestling thing stands mm. true. I love that I caught that call and it makes it even more dope why Stanson is my favorite because Stan Hansen out of all of them was the most famous one in Japan. Goldberg obviously is the most famous one in America because that's uh, Bill Goldberg. Uh, you know who that is, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, that bastard Goldberg. Yeah, <laughs> he's the most famous <laughs> of all of them. He's a fuck, but that, I think that's a really cool trope that Oda used. And, you know, like me and Versa always say, we pull for the big boys, and I like that big-ass hammer. My goodness, that shit's dope as hell. All right, Versa, we can get to the uh, conversation if you don't have anything else on uh, the Straw Hats and the new giant pirates. Uh, not really. I was just gonna say, like, the panel of Goldberg just casually holding up the sunny, the sunny yeah. I think, helps again reframe people on what, like, you know, the scaling is here because it also seeing that moose, seeing that yeah. moose on top of Hyrid and then Stanson is like, bro, that shit is huge. <laughs> yeah, but also, like, again, like with Goldberg, he's like, he's lifting it up, doesn't even have any much difficulty. Like a forty pound like, bag of like rice yeah. or some shit, you know. <laughs> like it's a thing. Like a box. But he's not really stressed about it, you know. Yeah, not at all. It's, it's like carrying like a big box over your head, or something or like like a piece mm -hmm. of furniture, you know, like a nightstand. Like it's not that big of a deal. But you know what it is? It's that fucking moose dinosaur, bro. Like it takes two of them, and it's still bigger than it. Like these are way mm -hmm. bigger animals than on Roostina. And I know Luffy was yeah. like, "Yeah, this is reminiscent of Roostina, brother." <laughs> What <laughs> and, and how they do like uh stands in a little bit complains where he's like, Man, you're gonna make me carry this big ass moose. Yeah, he's like, and they're like, Come on, we're the new job pirates. Yeah, we're gonna carry the moose. It's gonna be fun. Hyrdine's <laughs> uh, like, Don't embarrass me. We'll manage the meat for our saviors. Like, you just don't know <laughs> they saved our asses. So heave ho <laughs> love that love that bro i hope there's like some shanty that they sing like some warrior shanty that uh the new giant pirates sing i think that would be dope as hell but all right let's get to it we uh i i will say you called it that is not 100 gear four that's like some base luffy gear four new form bro because it looks different when especially when you see him coming out of it and the full version where he's punching uh at Loki, that looks different than our normal gear for uh bound man. Yeah, it definitely seems like from now on he'll be able to just phase like part of his body, mm -hmm. you know, like just kind of like throw one off, and then with gear three, gear two, you know, like gear two obviously mostly for like fast legs, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, gear three for whenever he just needs to, I think, hit like a bunch of little enemies, and then obviously yeah. gear four when he wants for, to like the. Yeah, for the powerful enemies like that, which are not as strong necessarily for Gear Five. So, yeah, when he when he wants to intimidate you and hurt you or whatever, and like a slightly amped base, mm -hmm. um, which which I think also part of it is also a case of I don't think again because I know this is an ongoing thing in the community, although I've seen it less so. Like people complaining about Luffy going to Gear Five too often or too quickly. Boom, I don't think we go. get this without yeah. Gear Five. You know what Facts. I mean? He had to master like, gear, gear four first. Yeah. And yeah, thanks. Like gear five has to exist and become something that he's willing to pull out for us to see gear four more regularly. Mm -hmm. Because like it's just like how after, you know, after the Warlords kind of got knocked down a peg and Buggy was allowed to join, and that's how you kind of knew, oh yeah, the Warlord system is kind of whatever. And now that Buggy's like a Yonko, the Yonko system is still important, but also kind of whatever. Um, I think I see the same power scaling wise when it comes to Luffy's different gears. Uh, speaking of the Yonkos, by the way, uh, yeah, I think it's very cool and interesting how they do just sort of give us a uh special bounty of 2.6 billion for Loki, literally mm -hmm. right under Luffy, you know, uh, Luffy, Luffy Law and Kid. And I think it's interesting, uh, really quickly before, before I say what I was about to say, because uh, it goes on the Luffy's gear thing and we'll get off of that and do because uh, I do want to make a video about Luffy's gears sometime this week. So I'll present the my thought process for what we'll talk in the video. I definitely agree with everything you said about his gears. He had to master. Well, he had to get to a level of gear five 
to where now Gear 4 is mastered, which I do believe he's mastered Gear 4, and Gear 5 is the pinnacle of his power. But we do know Luffy's based on a car. I definitely think there is a potential, not for, let's say, a gear, a six gear, but I think it'll be not a new form, but just like an ultimate, like, Super Saiyan type shit, where it's like, it's uh, Super Saiyan 2, where Super Saiyan 2 is just like a multiplier on top of Super Saiyan 1. And we'll discuss that. I present it to you so you can get your thoughts around it. And when we do the video on the sixth gear, that's kind of what I want to talk about. Is there a chance of a sixth gear? Because we've seen Luffy master every form. And I could see him mastering gear five by the final fight. And then it's, oh, the sixth gear is here. See, for me, I think how I would say it is, I don't know if he has any more like gears to get up to his top speed, if you want to use mm -hmm. the car analogy. But I do think it might be a case of we're going to see him actually learn how to pilot it. Because he still doesn't really know. Not at like, all. Yeah. He's not like, like he's not, he did a great fight against Rob Lucci, and I think he's good at gear five. But like, you know, he doesn't have any go-to moves yet. We don't really know his style with it. And mm -hmm. I think on some level, you don't want to make it too concrete because the whole point is that he's the most free and he can do like Toon Force type shit. He's but, between you know, like, Popeye I... and Bugs Bunny. <laughs> oh, those exact yeah. words, which is crazy. So I think eventually what we'll end up seeing is, uh, you know, like he'll have like a few special moves and, you know, like he'll get even more creative. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll ever be one of those uh, MCs where it's like, and because I can atomize everything into a rubber molecule, that means I can. No, that's not him. <laughs> which, by the, which isn't him. And I don't, I don't like stories that go that in that deep. No, nah, I feel I'm, I'm like, not even a power scaler. Yeah. Like I'm the funny exactly. enough. I'm the farthest person from a power scaler in our network. I just like talking about the powers themselves. I never want to scale people because mm -hmm. that shit makes no sense to me. Because when you start crossing series over, it's like, bro, you have no idea what that series would like, what that person would be in this world. Like that's stupid and idiotic in my opinion. Yeah. And like as a dungeon master or whatever, and someone who like writes sometimes it's like, if you want to make your character the most powerful character in fiction or whatever, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. You can just make up some, you can just make up some shit. And if you want to put science behind it, you can, but like, you know, like if we just want to get a dick waving contest, it's totally doable. Yeah. I uh, I'd much rather just a good story with good powers. You and myself both, right? Like, I feel you 100% on that. Like, I could make the most OP character in the world, and it's not hard to do, but I don't feel like that is a product of good writing. No, because also, again, a character, you know, is only supposed to be as strong as the challenges they face. That's why mm -hmm. Superman is kind of inconsistent. Because, you know, like, if they have to make him super strong, they'll make him strong. But if they have to make him, like, have to handle someone who's, like, street level, they'll make him street level. Yeah. Same thing and with it the never Hulk. makes sense, it's because... like, exactly. And that's mm -hmm. why Superman is not my favorite hero. That's why I'm, I'm more of a Batman I fan. I know, no, but look, <laughs> Batman is my favorite superhero, and that is why, because he is perfect, because he has no powers, and you can always adjust to whichever threat he's facing. And I also think that's why Wonder Woman is a better written character than Superman because Wonder Woman is OP as fuck. But you know there's a cap. You know there's a limit for what she can do. And that way you can always uh, adjust the scale. Whereas with Superman, bro, we've seen Superman destroy the sun. <laughs> like, there's no Listen. stronger than, like, you know what I'm saying? He, he punched re a hole in reality. Like, how much stronger do we need to get, bro? <laughs> Batman will be my favorite superhero whenever he learns how to raise his kids. Oh my gosh, he raises his kids. Don't <laughs> even get me started on that. And speaking of people who verse and doesn't think raises kids, I think we figured yeah, out get into Shanks. It. Yeah. I think we figured out the moment that Shanks became a Yonko six years ago. I think him defeating Loki, which is my prediction, I think he helped the El the Giants whoop, that ass. whoop his ass and allow him to be um taken prisoner. And I think that's what made Shanks the hero of the Giants and got him to Yonko status. That That is what I'm predicting. Also, bro, it's all sea stone. Isn't that crazy? You were you all, you all said yeah. last time we reviewed that, if that's all sea stone, my God. <laughs> um, Yeah, so like, from my understanding, I want to look it up, but yeah, six years ago, it does seem to fit the timeline. Mm -hmm. We also have to keep in mind that I believe the Mihawk fight was, uh, and when Mihawk became, like, man, for himself was whenever he fought Shanks. 
like you know they make it very clear Shanks did not become a Yonko because he had a fight and lived slash beat Mihawk. Mihawk got his clout off of Shanks. Yeah, he did. So this makes and me kind of wonder I'm, if I'm one of those people that think Shanks is stronger than Mihawk. I am 100. I mean, one of those people. I mean, I think that's obvious. But see, uh, no, don't say that. Don't say that because there's people who think because Mihawk well, is the world's strongest people, swordsman, uh, they think Mihawk is stronger than Shanks. I know, but that's literally like we've said before. That should literally just uh, up zero stocks on the low. Like that's literally <laughs> just a, you know, you seed one stock that way. I'm not gonna shit on me, Hulk, but I definitely think well, Shanks listen. is stronger than him for sure. Well, the only reason why I bring it up is not to shit on anyone, but other than to say, I wonder if like. That kind of got everyone's attention, and that's what made Mihawk be like, "Oh, oh, let's fight him!" All right, yeah, gonna, yeah, gonna walk Good my ass call. over here. Uh, Good well, call. then again, no, it couldn't be. It, it can't be because Shanks refuses to fight Mihawk. Uh, Mihawk refuses to fight Shanks post arm because of his arm, which happened all the way back when Luffy was like three or oh you know, yeah. So that yeah. might the, we don't we still don't know the Mihawk Shanks shit, but the fact yeah, that, but this could have been what made him a Yonko. Yes, yeah, the fact that this happened six years ago didn't have his arm and fought this dude. Sure. Yeah, this is this is post Blackbeard Scar. This is post Roger <laughs> dying. This is post everything. So if anything, this, this does give just, a little bit of input on Shanks. I was about to say this puts so much cloud on Shanks. One armed man fighting the strongest giant well, and whooping his ass. Well, that's the. Well, that's I don't the know thought. about that because. Well, I do understand, but also I don't think Shanks losing the arm was as big of a nerf as some people think it is. Like I think he's adapted to it. For oh, sure, for sure. But I, I mean, I still think that's the thing, though. You, you still gotta give my man credit for that. That's still that's still a feat, you know. All right. Well, in that case, uh, that's raising my Blackbird stock. Oh, there you go. He, you uh... don't wanna. You don't ever wanna give my man <laughs> Shanks clout. There you go. We're giving him clout without that verse and haterade. But I definitely am glad that we both can agree that this is probably what got him the Yonko status. Well, and also, I think that raises Loki stock as well. Like it, it yeah, just makes but, Loki that much. Damn, this guy's OP as fuck too. That does raise a question. Um, yeah, so I wonder why he. I know, obviously, it's to get Luffy's goat. I know it is. Mm -hmm. I know he was hoping maybe Luffy will get pissed off and maybe and break, break him the out chains. Of chains to, yeah, to fight fair, you know, mm -hmm. mano a mano. And Luffy was probably was like, "I'll just beat the hell out of you right now." I don't. Care. Yeah, I don't. I do not um, need to unlock you, brother. Uh, but that being said, though, I do wonder why he felt comfortable calling Shanks a coward. He, like, if it was just to get Luffy's goat, that's fine. But do you think maybe that's also him being like, if I had to say it, maybe he calls Shanks a coward because he's like, man, he could have killed me. He didn't. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, look, you know? we've seen throughout time and time throughout the show that Shanks, I don't want to say is a pacifist, but isn't as fight happy or and maybe fight happy is the wrong word. Isn't as bloodthirsty as people would assume a Yonko to be. He's not as killer mentality as Big Mom or Kaido, and everyone's called him weak for that. But I think that's purposefully done to show how he's different than the Figurelands because we well, saw how easy Garling was to kill someone, and I think that's going to go back to that nature versus nurture conversation when we find out that Shanks is. Garling's kid, and I think it's going to show how Roger raised him to be a good person type Well, shit. let me also put it to you like this. Shanks also seems to, more than almost anyone else in the story, besides maybe Dragon, have like a a third person perspective on like the world and like some of the mm -hmm. legends and stuff. Because he literally was like, I'm not that guy. I don't feel comfortable to take Roger's, you know, spot, I'm not going to play it. Yeah, I'm not going to take Roger's spot immediately. I'm going to like let it wait out. I think it's also a case of he didn't kill Loki in part because he was like, he probably knows about a prophecy in Elbath that happens whenever either Loki dies probably or is so. freed. Right. And around, also, man. yeah. And also, Shanks is probably like, I'll help y'all with this, but I can't do this for y'all because this is giant matters. Business. That's like, also completely. You know, I'm going to sit my ass down and listen, you know? Yeah. Because I'm going to be a good ally type shit. Yeah. yeah. No, I can like, definitely see that playing to the two. I think I, I definitely think we're on to something. I, I definitely see it as a combination of all of what we're saying. And I, I could see it definitely also, being y'all have to take I care don't... of this. I'm not a killer. I'm a I'm a decent person. Like that's not my that's not my path, but I will fight him for you all. And also not only that, I don't think Shanks is necessarily the type of person one way or the other. He doesn't because we've seen people give so much leeway. I don't think he's as merciful necessarily as you're saying, but I don't think he's the type of guy who, like, once an opponent is completely defeated, he then walks up and then, like, slices their throat. 
you know, like how everyone, or at least a lot of ZKK guys were saying Zoro would do it after Luffy beat Kaido. They'd be like, and then Zoro would execute Kaido, which I never thought was going to happen. That's not the kind of story One Piece is. Mm -hmm. I don't see Shanks as being that type of dude. He'll no, beat your ass, and he'll definitely leave you in a precarious situation where maybe you'll die. But I definitely don't think he's... He doesn't double tap. No, um, he's not. He's not that type of maybe, person. Maybe Blackbeard. Maybe oh, if yeah. he was fighting Blackbeard, he but would. that's it. But that's it. Yeah, yeah. no, he, Luffy. I mean, look, that I, 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 I like to think that Luffy got a lot of his stuff from Garp and Shanks, and Luffy's not the type to kill either. He's like, that. There's worse things than that than than killing. Like, mm -hmm. I'll take your dream from you, and I think that's a a mm -hmm. Shanks thing as well. I, I truly believe that. So, um, mm -hmm. and which is why I mean, it, he basically took Eustace Kid's dream. It's like I don't have to kill you. I'm just going to destroy your ship and everything and, and see if you make it back. If you make it back, cool deal. <laughs> yeah, like, and I think that's also a level of, like, not necessarily the same way that with Mihawk, obviously, but Shanks, I think, he also definitively doesn't want to cut down the new generation. Which not at all. I could argue, I could argue Loki and Harding are the new generation for the pirates just because For the Giants, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like, they're basically Luffy's age, if not, like, one generation above. You know? No, I, I look. I would. Add, I'm with you. I actually think you nailed it. I think they are Luffy's generation. I think they are the 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 giants that they're the worst generation mm -hmm, the for the giants. Yeah, like, and they want to see them. Like, who better to grow with Luffy than these guys? And you know, let's not cut them down. They'll be the future leaders of Elbath. We need strong people leading Elbath because mm -hmm. it's the most powerful land that we've seen. You know, with. That's one of the things Loki put in. This is the Adam tree, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. which I'll also say on top of that, we get obviously uh, Loki context. And he's like, yeah, the reason why the wolves don't fuck with me, the reason why I have these little humans who worship me, the reason why these animals like me is because I spent time down here whenever I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I ran this shit. I was, I, you literally use the word befriend. So, like, this is literally back like to what you're saying about him being the outcast. Yeah, like a badass little kid hanging out in like the land of the dead or whatever, mm -hmm. making friends with all these giant animals, like probably through roughhousing, just like Luffy, uh, Luffy and Co. did with the tiger, you know, uh, back on you know their home island. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm also so thinking like, that Loki's the only one where Hyrodeen stayed up with the giants with his dad, trained with them. I think Loki trained in the other realms. Mm -hmm. which we predicted back then. And I think this is a little confirmation of our prediction. Which I which I think is a good, again, Luffy parallel, but also an Odin parallel, because Odin mm -hmm. wanted to go out to sea. And if anything, I bet you Loki kind of wanted to go out to the sea too. And the only reason why Hyredeen is really allowed to go out to sea is because Loki's chained up. Yep, you know? yep, 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 yep. And Loki feels like a prisoner in this place. He wants to experience more culture because he's the guy that experienced all the different things on this island, which will probably make him which, if I'm going to make a bet by the end of this arc, I'm willing to say Loki will be the king of Elbath, or they'll do the two-king system where that we saw before, mm -hmm. before that guy died, before Big Mom killed him, and it'll be him and Hyredeen, because Hyredeen understands the Giants the best, but Loki understands the rest of Elbath the best. And I think it is also those things where I think, again, Loki is like a very different giant, and like they seem disgraceful, but I think on some level, and this will go into the next point I want to bring up, Loki also, like, he is a giant supremacist, but he also sees the way that the giant system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I think on some level, it's a case of, like, well, how do we know if fucking giant society is the best if we don't go fucking clash Outside, yeah. with other people and see if mm -hmm. we stand up? If we get our shit smacked down, clearly we, we weren't the best. Like, a very Sukuna at the end of JJK thing, yes, where sir. he's like, until someone proves otherwise, I am the best. But if mm -hmm. someone does beat me, then I, you know. Then I can say I'm not the um, best, yeah. But man, those but, chains, bro. But, <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um. What do you think about his whole thing, uh, his deal that obviously Luffy isn't taking? But I think it's quite interesting, which is the... I want I'll you destroy to do my chains by dawn. Yeah, I'll destroy whatever pirate crew. I'll even make it... I'll wipe them out so thoroughly that no one even knows that I had a hand in it, and it's fine. You know? Very interesting deal. Luffy's definitely not accepting that shit, but... But do you think... Let's say we put him in like a black beard or someone who might take him up on it. Do you think he could eliminate any single pirate crew? Hmm. Him plus, plus, let's say he has a faction of giants who agree with him, which I assume he does somewhere. Hmm. I think it depends on the crew. I I don't think he's taking out Shanks's crew. Obviously, I don't think he. I don't. I really don't think he'll take out the Straw Hats because I'm gonna give our boys some some clout. 
Um, I think you can take out Big know, Mom's man. crew. I... Uh, uh, I don't. See, I don't know. Yeah, do you I think don't. He could have stood up to the. Do you think mm-hmm. he could have stood up to the Kaido crew, sans Big Mom? Because I feel like. See, I was thinking I that. Mean, let me say this: Loki is hard to scale, and like Loki versus Loki versus any of the Yongas, I think it's hard to scale. But you have to think about all the people bottom uh, underneath it. That's what I was about to say. And, it's like, does he? Like if, we, he needs a, he needs at least two people with him. And when I say two people with him, he needs two people with him that are king level. And like, I would hope that both of them are like Yonko Commander one level. If that's the case, mm-hmm. then maybe. But like, I'm I'm giving. I think you saying that just made me realize. I don't think he could do Big Mom's crew or Kaido's crew unless he has two people with him. Well, let me say this. I don't know necessarily if he could beat the crew, but I think him and his crew could absolutely destroy their territory. Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Like, I which I think is, which I think is almost just as good. You know, like. If you literally destroy Full Lead Island, mm-hmm. just fucking atomize it with like a bunch of Oka, Oku sovereignties and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, you didn't like beat Blackbeard and crew. You put I'm him back sure you though. Could. You put him back, and also I think you definitely are going to kill a lot of his Titanic captains. Like, as much as I love mm. the Straw Hats, and I won't say that Zoro and Saji couldn't handle it. You know, there's Jimbei in there as well, because I think literally the end of Egghead shows that Zoro and Sanji, I think, are about giant level. Mm-hmm. Like, experienced fighter giant level. Like, I don't think the rest of the crew is really cutting it, man, just because of the pure yeah, physicality I, 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 of giants and their attack potency, you know? Um, uh, so when it comes to that, I would say that, that Zoro, Sanji, Jimbei would all survive. I'm going to even say that I think Robin would make it out. Because I think she would be, I have her as the next strongest in the crew. Mm. But the weakling trio, out of there. Brooke, out of there. And Frankie's like a 50-50 toss of the coin. I, uh, I think that's Frankie how I have their strength. I think Frankie could put up a good fight, but I think once they beat through the general Frankie, which I think I think mm-hmm. they will, and I don't think it would take particularly long. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, fucking uh, Sakazuki destroyed the general Frankie at the end yep. there. No, I'm with like, you. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I it's um, it's a very interesting question. I don't think, I I don't think he could do destroy uh, when he says completely. I don't think he could destroy completely any Yonko crew except Cross Guild. I think he got Cross Guild. I don't I don't see them as strong as the Straw Hats, Blackbeard, Shanks, Whitebeard, uh, uh, K- Kaido, or Big Mom. Like, I'm sorry, Crocodile Buggy in that crew ain't cutting it. The only one that's making, you know, is Mihawk. That's it, brother. Well, you know where I'm at, actually? I don't know how many of the Yonko crews can handle. I think you can play your away their territories. I think, actually, though, they would be great against the Marines. Mm, okay. I don't know why I say that, but I honestly feel that uh, Loki versus Akainu, I think, is a pretty good fight. I'd maybe mm-hmm. even do Loki. And then I think that they wipe out the entirety of the Marines and Marine Ford, depending on just wow. how many jobs they bring. Wow. See, all right. I'm gonna let let's table this. And that's with the that's with the Orange Jr. caveat because I love Orange Jr., but mm-hmm. he wasn't really allowed to fight. They let, locked him up pretty quick. Let's table this but, until we once we find out Loki's strength, we will do a whole video on Loki versus and we'll discuss each yeah. crew in the Marines. We'll title it like We'll title it like Loki's bargain. Yeah, and... some we'll do something where it's like Ken Lo- or Ken, the Loki gauntlet. Like, can he make it through? And we'll put Cross Guild at number one as the top, as like the first crew. Or we can even do Kid and Lost crew as the first crew, then co- then Cross Guild, and then get stronger, oh, progressively stronger. Kid and Lost crew. Oh, oh yeah, they're gosh. fucked. They're fucked. That's why it, it's a gimme round. Like, you know, you got to give them a I gimme know. round. So <laughs> a Kid and Lost crew, both together, we're combining They're walking them. into the ocean, picking up the submarine and throwing that bitch onto a mountain. <laughs> or we can do Kid's crew first, then Lost crew, then Buggy's crew as like his opening rounds like this is the pre-show and then who do you think w- would be last who do you think should be last because i don't think it'd be the straw heads probably blackbeard you put blackbeard's crew last you think that would be who would be last just, i don't know because i think they could run through so many of them but blackbeard as a yonko is just especially See, I, loki honestly his him being able to be a blackbeard his ability to do that immediately went down upon eating the double fruit 
Pretty Devil thinking, Fruit Loki that's just as strong would probably would have been able to handle it. I was thinking Whitebeard's crew or Shanks' crew last. And then Blackbeard's crew, like I I think those three are the last three crews. And then I think the middle tier would be the Straw Hats, Big Mom, and Kaido. And then the beginning tier mm-hmm. is Law, Kid, and Cross Guild. Oh, I guess the Marines yeah. would also be in that middle tier too. Yeah, and I also think it is one of those things where, like we said, we're going to see how many co-conspirators he had. Yeah, we're going to see also... his people and his strength. I think those two things, like his power, his devil fruit power, his hockey abilities, and then who's with him. Once we see all three of those things, we will know. Because if he don't have does no hockey... Giant even fuck it, does it, a giant even fucking need hockey? They basically... Gonna... I think I would almost say giants inherently have hockey damn near. I agree. Like, I agree with you, but if he doesn't have any, it's like distinctly spelled out that way, it becomes a lot harder for him for Marines and uh, Kaido, Straw Hats. Like, the mid-tier is super hard for him if he doesn't have uh, hockey. I, I wonder if he can do an Okoku Sarventy or something, or if he has his own version of it, which mm-hmm. I bet he does, and I bet that shit's going to be fucking sick. Yeah. Um, And also, we have to see what his Devil Fruit actually does. It does, um, yeah. Big timed as like mm-hmm. a big mythological zone, probably. some Like, like what are the effects of shit. it? The hacks? The, or all like that a, shit. Your yeah. Mander or some shit. Can he, um, does he have Conqueror's hockey? Because if he has that, then oh my goodness, that if anyone adds it to needs another con- level. If anyone has it, I him? feel like Loki should probably have <laughs> No, I'm, look, I'm with you, but like, but you like, know, if he has if it, if had it, if it's on paper, that this guy has it plus his crazy devil fruit, then this phrase doesn't be, it's not as crazy. So that's uh, something, that's and, a and video last, that we definitely should make. The last thing I'll also say, we also should maybe do a very slight split on this because I think part of what he's offering is under the idea of you free me, I go Molly Pyridine. Like, <laughs> I go like, I put his ass in a pack or in a jail cell. <laughs> and then he, instead of having just the conspirators, he has the allegiance of every giant. Mm, okay, I got you. You know, because I think that's also what he's offering. He's like, "Look, you do this. I'll take my rightful place as king of Elbath after like a day of wreaking havoc, and then you have then, a, then you have a the entirety of Elbath for yeah. one ba- one fight, mm-hmm. one war. You have us, and then after that, it's over. We're taking well, over the world. If he has conspirators, we're not giving him all the giants. But I, if he doesn't, then well, that's a good that's a good I, thing. I mean, like I said, I think that's why it would be good to two tier it because again, oh, okay, gotcha. Give it two. I, different I don't sides. think it's fair. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to arbitrarily nerf him that hard of being like it's just him and like two dudes who like him. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, I because see. Well, yeah, the Warrior Giants of do he apply strength. No, I. I know, I'm the Warrior Giants of Elbath do apply strength. I think if he honestly beat the fuck out of Hyrdeen on some level, they if follow. No one else knew they could challenge him. They'd have to be like, well, I guess we, we have, have no choice. This shit. Yeah, we'll have to follow him. You know. All right, yeah, we could do two different sides of it. I ain't mad at that. Anything else you got on this mm. chapter? Um, because I think yeah, we, I, I will say I don't know. I I do like through gonna call back. I do like how Luffy's shown his instant empathy with animals. Yeah, they all fuck. I think them. that'll be important. Mm-hmm. And I do think, I think that was great for Loki to see. Obviously, I I don't know. I just maybe this is just me liking an idea of something and wanting to write it to the end. I think it would be cool if Loki, who is kind of evil, is the princess of this arc. And like <laughs> kind of is like, you know what? I fucks with you, Straw Hat Luffy. You're just like me, except teeny. Mm-hmm. So I like you. <laughs> Okay, hell yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I don't have it pretty much anything else. I am excited to see where we go. I well, still don't think Loki's also, a villain. Where do you get those human slaves from that just uh, want to the dead? I yeah, I don't know. I want to know what their deal is, too. But, for sure. But yeah, I definitely still think uh, Loki's not going to be the villain of this arc. Still going to wait and see with that. But that's pretty much everything, ladies and gents. Be on the lookout this week. We'll do that Gear 6 thing, Versin and I, because I definitely think that's that's an interesting conversation of does Luffy get a Gear 6 or what's the extent of his powers going forward? And then we're, we have no break, so we'll do a chapter review as well. So expect two One Piece videos this upcoming week. Oh. Versin, oh, well, go ahead. Last thing, uh, just because they purposely faded out on it. Um, why do you think Shanks came back to re-up? And the fact that it's, you know... Like, because well, I yeah. just took the assumption, like, at the very... Uh, like, after the Gear 4, after Luffy calms down and he morphs back, and he said... And Luffy literally asked, so why did Shanks come all the way out here? Noah, he was just running an error and just come out here... And is he still in Elbath? And Loki's like, well, that's something I can just tell you. And then it fades to other shots. Mm, I mean, look. 
that maybe he comes back. Maybe maybe he is back this hard. Maybe we do get the Davy back fight. May, uh, that could be that, or you know, maybe Shanks was doing some some suspect shit, uh, where he found out the location of the last Poneglyph. It could be something like that. Um, interesting. Yeah, like, I, I, I have no idea. I don't think he's. I don't think he's coming back for the arc, but I will say, uh, I don't know. Like, it whenever Shanks came, I thought he was just taking a little stop by doing like a, a last party tour, basically, and maybe re-upping a little bit of information. And then, you know, and then after the kid thing and then after the Bardo thing, he was like, all right, I'm going to knock these uh, these two side quests and then I'm going to fucking Laugh Tale. Um, or maybe I'm going to go fight Blackbeard, Blackbeard. and Laugh Tale. Yeah. But this does imply that Shanks spent a little more time than I think most people probably thought he did on Elbath and that he, like, maybe went a little deeper in Elbath. Maybe there's something thought. there that could help him with that Blackbeard fight. It could be yeah. numerous things, but interested to see. Maybe, maybe he's fucking took Mjolnir. Maybe possible, it. very, very possible. <laughs> but all right, ladies and gents, that's pretty much everything. Person, tell the people where they can follow you at on social media. Hey, everyone, you can follow me at Verse Navasso pretty much anywhere. You can also follow me at Josh Trust, the original like, government name. Uh, I'm trying to start using Blue Sky. Same, I've updated my profile, so it's a thing. Uh, I'll probably still use Twitter as a guilty conscience, but I'm gonna I try and start be. migrating there. Obviously, the more people I know in my orbit and the more people I know professionally who migrate it, the easier the migration happens. So I guess this is my call. If you want to stop using it, now's the time to migrate. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not squander this moment when everyone I think is kind of dissatisfied with uh, Twitter. Um, you know, go ahead and make the push. If you use it, then like, you know, it's good. People will actually use it. If you don't, we're all just going to stay on that goddamn site forever and we're just going to like watch it get shittier and shittier. <laughs> All right, y'all make sure y'all follow Verson. We'll have all his links and his Blue Sky links in the tw in the description. You can follow me at LinBWT on Twitter. Follow Bros Who Think at Bros Who Think. Oh. I will also put my the my Blue Sky thing in the description as well as the Bros Who Thinks Blue Sky in the description. I'll start saying that more. I just got to get used to it. But um, uh, what are you gonna say? I also I actually I do have one call out. Um, so uh, two things. One, um, if anyone wants good desserts and treats and what have you my family is starting to do we're professional bakers uh outside of my other work we are starting to do holiday trays or whatever as weird as it may sound dm me on x or on there or wherever you find me and maybe we can work something out you know you can buy up some good baked goods for thanksgiving or christmas or whatever oh, we just yeah. got an order for 400 pies for christmas oh. so yeah you know what i'm saying is people like our stuff like you won't be disappointed and also uh my new work uh, has officially launched with uh, one of the groups I've been working with. We are the Louisiana Medical Consortium on Climate and Health. Um, and uh, yeah, we are trying to merge frontline communities as well as healthcare workers all across Louisiana. We are Louisiana specific, but we are trying to be the entire region. Um, you know, we are trying to uh, link those two causes together to help combat climate change and also for a lot of the health impacts on communities that suffer through climate change and also industrial build out. Um, I will probably be posting a link to that later today, uh, just to get it out there. Um, but yeah, like just fill up the sign up sheet and uh, let's collaborate on something. And if you know anyone in the medical industry, or if you know anyone uh, who's a frontline community member or whatever, tell them about us. Have them read our uh, bylaws, and you know if they want to like collaborate with us, let me know. Hell yeah. So make sure y'all follow Versa. Make sure y'all check out all that stuff he just mentioned and get involved with your community if that's something that interests mm -hmm. you. But like I said, all the Blue Sky links, the Twitter links will be in there. Make sure you check out this week Manga Melee, Bros Who Binge, Bros Who Think Podcast, as well as the Work Shoot Show. Pete and I got a lot of good stuff coming for the wrestling fans. Uh, this week, Schubert and I have a, uh, the end of Penguin, the season finale, so be on the lookout for our review of that. Bros who think, like I said, Verson will be joining us this week to talk the election, as well as Reg and myself doing stuff. Oh, Pharaoh and I will have our kingdom review, the arc review out, and then manga melee orb, as well as a normal episode. So be on the lookout for uh, all of that content. Did you want to tell the people on the show real quick about how uh, manga melee is getting a little bit more centralized uh, on the Bros and Think Network? Oh, well, I mean, I explained all that on the BWT pod. Fair, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, I explain all that. But yeah, for uh, all your manga and anime content, you will be able to find that on Manga Melee. And then um, just manga reviews will be myself version or myself and uh, Pharaoh or anyone on the network. So 
be on the lookout for just your manga and anime content. Make sure you're tapped in with Manga Melee. So with that, with that being said, let's end up and we'll see you next week with our Gear 6 video and Chapter 1132 review. Until then, peace! Thank you.